Hi, welcome to Gentle Dreams. I'm Mike, and uh, today the sun came out, and I just thought I'd take the TW out. I wound up on top of uh, Mount Baver Lookout, did the trails, got a little mud on there, a little mud on me. But anyway, what I want to tell you about is last weekend, I'll throw a little clip in about uh, the view up there on top of uh, Mount Baver. Well, I should have brought my action camera with me, but I just headed out for a little spin. Wound up coming up to Mount Baber. I'm up on the lookout now. Beautiful day. Good place to do uh, social distancing, <laughs> especially when you come by yourself. You don't have to worry about any germs. You just got to worry about if you crash. There's no one around. So, anyway, up on the lookout, there's a little shack there for the uh, antenna, I believe. Anyway, you got Eddieville right down there. Can't quite see with these trees growing up. You got uh, Table Mountain over there. Where is that Table Mountain? Oh, Mary's Peak. Got snow on top of it. And uh, you got the ocean out there. I don't know if you can make it out in the camera. But all the way out there in the distance. Right out there, that's the ocean we're looking at. Very nice. Past one bike or one group looped around, came back, one guy's standing on the side of the road holding his wrist and no one was with him. Now we see a truck going down the road, so. They must have uh, dumped it and hurt his wrist. That's the downside to coming up by yourself. But if you just go putt along, you know, good way to get out of the house. Breathe some fresh air. Maybe see some animals. I haven't seen any today. Well, there was a pretty cool bird flying right over here a minute ago. But anyway, when you're on a, a little TW200 like this, it's not like you're going to be flying around the trails. But uh, I would definitely suggest upgrading the front tire. There was a girl up here on one of the events one year I had a brand new TW she changed that front tire and she was brand new to riding and everything and she went around on these trails like they were paved roads almost that tire there has been slipping and sliding everywhere up here the back tire you know that slides that's fine but when the front tire slides it's a little spooky all right well I'm we'll shut her down and hit the trails on the back way and back to the house. Last weekend I was doing some work around the yard and I got a skinny spot down the side of my house. And I thought, oh, I could drive down along there and load the trash up and all that and get rid of it. And I go down and on one side there's a, a bank. So I just figure I'll put the tire up on one side and just kind of lean as I go through there. I get up towards the front and I didn't have the back end over far enough. So it leans over and this spot right here almost hit the post that holds the roof of my house up. So you'll hear in the video that I Austin powered myself. So I tried to go forward and backward and what it did is it walked the back end that way towards the house instead of this way towards the hill, which I needed. So it just kind of got the thing cocked like that. So I was leaning over like this when I went to back up. I couldn't really turn it. My wife had already left, so I didn't have anyone to spot on that side that from in the cab. It looked like I was going to hit. So it wasn't planned. Uh, it was just driving through the yard. So we're going to have a little uh, winching one-on-one. 
Uh, you'll see in the video, I two blocked it, go out to a block, and then I go up to a tree, to a big block, and then back down, and I drag the back end around with my own winch. So, let's get to it. So I got this skinny spot along the side of my house, and I thought, oh, well, if I keep a tire up on the bank, I could probably drive through there, load some of the crap, because this is where the trash cans are, load some of the crap there and get rid of it. And I uh, Austin Powers myself. When I go up on that bank toward the tree, it leans me over into that green post, and uh, I got a little issue now. So, looks like I'll be using a jack, walking the back over. I'd go forward and try to get the back to come over, and I couldn't get it to move over. That's funny. Up on that bank, just trying to drive by that tree and that post in my own yard. Now that's funny. So, what's the lesson here? Don't get comfortable around the house. <laughs> well, I thought of another lesson to be learned here. I was thinking about getting a second snatch block in case I ever had to recover myself. So if I had two snatch blocks, I could take the winch out to that tree, go through a snatch block, and go up to that tree, have a snatch block, come back down to my hitch, and then I could hold the brake and or put a strap around the front so it doesn't try to drag me forward and pull the back end of the machine over. So, I'll go up to the house, I mean the shop, and see if I can find a snatch block that might work. I think I have some big ones. Let's see if I can drag that over. Okay, let's see if this works without me in the machine. It might need uh, a strap to go from the hitch there over to that post. There's concrete down at the bottom. So that's going up to a block there. It's going across to a block here. I'm trying to use my own winch to pull it, pull the back end of the machine over. So let's see what happens. See there how it's tipping it. It's pulling the, the weight off the back. I have a wireless remote here. So as I push that, pulls the back. See how it's dragging the back end of the machine over? It's also dragging it in. So I will need to put something back to that post or I'll back up a little bit. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna back up a little bit and let it do another pull. So I'll pause this for a second and reposition. Okay, so I backed up and it just went through that pulley and that pulley, no problem. You see I got space in the front now. You see how it's got tension on the back. You see how that tires. Trying to see how that tires being pulled sideways. My only problem now is that block up there is right at where the winch hook is, but it's a real big block, so it could pull the strap right through it if I have to. Let's go ahead and. Uh, 
get over here and push this button again and see what happens. It is dragging the back. Now when I let off, it'll probably try tipping. Okay, let's see what it does when I let off. So you see how I awesome powered myself here. There's another angle at it. As I went up and I tried to go around, the back tire was just over that way too far leaning because of this elevation difference may it lean so much that I was going to hit that post so um, so I'll back up a little bit see if I can pull out of here so you can see here how I have a big block not one that I would carry out on the trail this is one from in my shop the hook was able to roll through there and the straps rolling through it and uh, not the ideal situation having that go through there but it did work down to the hitch over to that tree i'll go down there and show you what it looks like now okay i should be able to unhook it now and back out See, I got room by that post. A little bit of room there. By the time this tire clears, I should be able to swing that one over. And I've got room over here. It's just because I drove forward and it tipped it so much that the top of the roof wanted to try to lay into the post. So if I was to have that back tire up there yeah without a spotter I shouldn't try it again but I am tempted <laughs> if that back tire was all the way up against those rocks before I got to this point and I came over here and I was up against this granted that whole machine would be laying over like that but that might have it <laughs> over enough for the roof to not hit the post but my wife left so without a spotter i'm not going to try it okay well i didn't plan on doing a video on winching yet i was gonna eventually but there's the basics on how to get out in your own yard at your own house <laughs> uh, it still cracks me up Okay, I'm going to unhook all that and uh, see if I can drive out of there. Okay, so I was able to back that out of there. So something I wanted to point out, I don't know if I can get the camera to see it. Uh, down in here maybe, no. Down in here, if I turn the camera maybe. There. See that's rat nest of uh, cable right in there? So you want that to lay on top of each other nice and tight as it's going across. It should go back and forth nice and tight next to each other. So what I'll do now to get that wrapped correctly is I'll take this over on one of the slopes of my property, maybe where that apple tree is, and have the general going down the hill. I'll run the cable all out and then I will suck it in with a little bit of weight on it of the machine and then just uh, walk it back and forth as it's going in so that it lays nice and tight together.
So that works better for the longevity of the cable. And, uh, and you won't have all that popping and snapping of when they're laying on top of each other and the pieces are, uh, are they're crossing over like that. Or if there's a little gap and then another one goes down in between it, then when you go to pull the cable out, it, it binds because it's stuck between the others. It'll just make your winch work better and your cable last longer. All right, I guess that's all for this journey. We'll see you on the next one.